Uh, so much to unpack today. Uh, let's start from a big picture. <laughs> let's start from a big picture perspective. What were your biggest takeaways, or what about the hearing stood out to you? Well, the one thing is that uh, it was not surprising that Mr. Duterte behaved the way he did, and I think that's for the benefit of a lot of people, particularly the victims, because he said a lot of things today that uh, might be useful in attempts to uh, bring him to justice. You know, he admitted having his own dead squad, he admitted, you know, inducing police officers to commit crimes, things like that. So, um, in that sense, this was, uh, the hearing was, uh, I would say, uh, very revealing. On the other hand, though, uh, I think uh, the Senate was hijacked by this uh, person. He basically ran away with it. Mm. He controlled <laughs> uh, practically the, the, the flow of the conversation and the senators were not given much chance to you know, to question him in a way, in a very, in very significant ways. Uh, Senator Rice Hortiveros did try to, uh, to elicit some answers from him, some more details, but uh, mm -hmm. he didn't get much help from her uh, uh, colleagues in the Senate. So that's, um, that's kind of sad. And so, you know, uh, in my mind, I think the senators uh, failed in their duty to really exercise some oversight uh, in taking uh, Mr. Duterte's word and you know holding it up to light, uh, in, you know, in the uh, to make him in the future possibly accountable for what he did. So yeah, that's my my take on that one. Oh my, it's a uh, former President Duterte was at one point the one who was questioning the senators, right? Uh, yeah, which... he, <laughs> if you if you're familiar with how he uh, he uh, held press conferences yes, when he was in power. Yes. It, Sounded like that mm. a lot. So and, uh, <laughs> and, the, and the cursing and the use of expletives at every turn, uh, they couldn't get a hold. They couldn't, you know, control that. They couldn't put a stamp. That's on true. It. Mm. That's true. I mean, it, it's, you know, um, people were probably say, oh, no, it's just profanity and all of that, mm -hmm. and they were dealing mm -hmm. with a lot more, mm -hmm. issue, lot more uh, important issues here, such as the killings. But unfortunately. Not a lot of information about specific uh, mm -hmm. uh, cases or about how they conducted the drug war were uh, elicited from Duterte. A lot of what he said were self-serving. And, and, and I forgot to mention earlier that, in fact, uh, this is actually kind of the design by uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa and Senator Bongo to hold, this, to hold this hearing. Because keep in mind, they were the ones who, who wanted this to happen. And uh, as we see today, as we saw today, uh, they pretty much gave the Senate uh, hearing as a platform for Mr. Duterte and for Mr. De La Rosa himself, who is but, a respondent in many of these, to, uh, to stick to their own narrative and defend the drug war. But Kaloy, uh, the onus on controlling the hearing and controlling the narrative on, of that hearing, though, is not on the former president, but on the senators. Um, were you happy with uh, how they uh, conducted the entire hearing? Oh, not at all. I, I think, and you're right. The honest is on the senators, particularly the uh, Senator Coco Pimentel, who was chairing the whole proceeding. The thing is that uh, what Mr. Duterte did was did was not surprising. In fact, I kind of expect him to, to to do exactly what right. he did. Mm -hmm. I, I would be more surprised if he did it. You know, uh, what was disappointing was how he was given so much leeway. How he was given so much. How Mr. Uh, uh, Pimentel cut him a lot of slack to the mm. detriment of the others who may have questions, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. Senator Lisan de Velas. Well, Kaloy, uh, one thing that he did say in this hearing that uh, uh, is capturing headlines all over the world is that he admitted that uh, he had a death squad of seven. No, una tinuturo pa niya yung mga PNP chief mm. at saka yung mga director, mm -hmm. regional director niya, sinasabi niya, death squad lahat yan. Tapos, uh, nung tinanong na siya ni Senator Risa Honteveros, when she pressed him on it, sinabi niya, walang police at uh, these are criminals, killing criminals. Kung hindi, na sinabi niya, kung hindi mo patayin, papatayin kita. Uh, my question is, I mean, can we hold him to account with anything that he's saying in this hearing? Because it seems that he says something, tapos babawiin niya. Mm. Which he does, classic in, in, yeah, in, in press conferences. Yeah. But this time, it's a different setting. It's a Senate hearing, and he was sworn. What can what, what can we was, use yeah. now? Uh, that's a good point that he was under oath actually mm. when he was saying all of this. Uh, you know, probably in a court proceeding, in a kind of like a Philippine court, that would be pointless because uh, he might have some out 
uh, in the way he was uh, speaking about these things. But keep in mind, the case that's pending now, that's being looked into at ICC, uh, Crimes Against Humanity, tend to have a much wider kind of uh, 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 latitude in terms of determining a person's culpability. Mm -hmm. uh, so itong mga itong bagay na, you know, uh, he would say uh, he would induce police officers or police officials to, you know, to, for criminals to commit crimes so that they can kill them easily. Th those kinds of statements, uh, I, you know, I, I, I hope would count uh, to the investigators of the ICC. This, this, May, this underscores actually the level of control Mr. Duterte had and the level of, of responsibility that he feels towards police officers. Keep in mind during the hearing, he was like endless about his, you know, point to, uh, to, you know, to, you know, to help, to protect, uh, that he was only uh, looking out for the wel welfare of police officers, things like that. So he was very, very consistent about that. But again, uh, this being a crime against humanity, that will be factored in as well. Uh, he insists that he and he alone should be legally be responsible and that they might just come. Okay, Kaloy, um, you know, Senator Bongo said a couple of weeks ago, uh, he pointed out that during the Duterte administration, no one wanted to speak out. And in fact, the other lawmakers, some of who are still incumbent today, they even applauded him. Um, are they completely blameless? And you know, a lot of people are also saying these hearings are politicized. And President, the former President Duterte even asked himself, asked of the Senate, why have I not been brought to justice? And I thought that was a really good yeah. question. That was uh, a lot of chutzpah there by the President to <laughs> challenge uh, the Senate, uh, you know. In, indeed, I mean, he admitted he had killed a lot of people. Why am I still not facing any serious charges from any of you? So um, he's challenging the authorities to, I mean, he's, he, you know, it's a very in-your-face uh, attitude of the president. And again, that's not surprising. But the senators, back to your question about the senators, are, are, are they blameless in all of this? Of course not. A lot of them, look, there are several in the Senate that remain uh, supporters of Mr. Duterte. There's Bato, there's Bongo, there's Robin Padilla, and a host of others. And even those senators who we might think are neutral in all of this are basically silent. So that silence is, sabihing nga nila, complicity. That silence may be uh, interpreted as being supportive of Mr. Duterte. I mean, sure, you know, people are still afraid of him, but look. Uh, this administration, in fairness to this administration, the Marcos administration, they're trying to do to set things right. It seems, you know, it's begun in uh, the lower house of Congress, where uh, a lot of allegations have come out, and which is precisely why the Senate hearing was called to begin with, because they want to counter those allegations. So things are moving. It looks like things are moving accountability-wise, and uh, these senators who enabled the drug war, who in fact also. Uh, persecuted uh, Lila Bilima and other critics will have to answer for their behavior at some point. When uh, Duterte said in his opening statement, I have always viewed people addicted to illegal drugs as victims and patients requiring medical health and not as criminals. What was going through your mind? It's a lot of bunk, to be honest. Um, you know, you can't claim to be respecting the rights or, or the welfare of these obviously uh, 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 victims uh, and at the same time launch a campaign to annihilate them. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and they keep saying, oh, there are mga drug rehabilitation centers, facilities uh, mm. we put up. I mean, that's just that's something that anybody can do. Even Cynthia Villard, Villard did that. Uh, but, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. The point is that the drug war regardless of how many rehab centers you built. And in fact, I would challenge uh, people to check if those rehab centers actually worked because there is uh, some evidence from so-called harm reduction groups that these rehabilitation and treatment centers by the government are not actually working as they should. So anyway, the, 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 you know, the, the, the whole point of all of this is to try to determine how bad the drug war was waged. Uh, it should be assumed that when you are, that if you are a, a sane and, 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 and responsible leader, rehab and treatment should be the first thing to do. Because if you recognize that a drug problem is a, a health problem more than a safety problem, that should be the first thing that you will uh, you know, deal with. But this president, no, the first day of their office, they issued the, 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 the directive 
to launch the uh, uh, the drug war. Uh, what does it say? And then after after that, dozens and dozens, hundreds, and then thousands and thousands ended up dead. I mean, that kind of you know simple uh, f- fact uh, uh, flies in the face of what they're saying about uh, any other things about you know being respecting the rights of drug users. Hmm. One thing that uh, the former president also kept saying was that he had the back of uh, our police force. Uh, sabi niya, protectado ko sila because of uh, so and so and um, you know they they lose their livelihood when they're suspended at wag nyo silang uh, kumbaga the, all they did was follow and ako ang mm-hmm. dapat uh, kasuhan dito akong responsable what do you think w- was he trying to do there um, speaking to, to to police officer was do you think he was also trying to 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 connect with them with this i mean put putting that um, in contrast with Rowena Garma's uh, testimony over at uh, the House of Representatives, do you think he was uh, trying to do something there, or was it just the classic Duterte trying to? Yeah, it's uh, not the first time he has said it. He often does yeah. say, Pero say those ulit things. Ulit kasi. Ulit mm-hmm. ulit. And uh, throughout so, uh, the six uh, years. Sean is correct. I mean, that's, a, that's not the first time he, he did that. Uh, I mean, he always was uh, very clear about his support for the police, and for good reason. In fact, during his term, he, he took extra steps to try to, uh, you know, to try to cultivate a very good relationship with the police and the military. And, you know, uh, for better or worse, you got, you got to give him credit for that. But um, the, other, the flip side of that is he clearly used the police for a lot of nefarious activities during the drug war. I mean, you cannot dismiss all of the documentation, not just that came out in the, in the uh, Congress hearings, but all the documentation of a lot of groups, including ours, about the conduct of the police, mm-hmm. um, you know, during the drug war, the abusive, the very, very lethal conduct that they, that they, uh, that they did. Uh, and it's not a secret that the police are very, very abusive in the Philippines. A lot of them are very, very corrupt, not all, obviously, but that's the kind of, that's the kind of organization that is perfect uh, to enforce something as uh, uh, something as lethal and and and, and I would say uh, egregious as the drug war. So there you go. I mean, you know, Duterte had to do that. They he had to make sure that the police are, you know, uh, they are taken care of. That's the bottom line for him. Okay. Uh, mm. You know, it's 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 his modus. So yeah. Mm. Keep in mind that uh, the the five uh, people, five suspects who are. Um, said to be On going to list. be served warrants of arrest by the ICC are all policemen. Mm. They are critical to this investigation. Um, and uh, with Rina Garma being called up when she was in detention, pinaliwan ng ni Presidente kung bakit INC ang gusto niya na mag-lead ng kanyang drug war. I mean, all of those things, uh, it is quite worrying, right? I, that's why I was wondering um, if this was uh, a message that, that the president, former president was trying to send uh, to the police force? Well, one way to look at this is that he's signaling to the police force, to those who he worked with, to kind of circle the wagon, as it were. They need to protect each other because uh, obviously the ICC is targeting the most responsible in these crimes against humanity. It's Duterte, Bato, and other high level officials. But uh, if the Department of Justice of the Marcos administration is serious about accountability and holding people, uh, you know, to account or bring them to court for uh, for the crimes they did during the drug war, then some other police officers, lower lower level, are, are are vulnerable for that. And and Mr. Duterte is basically telling them, "I have your back." And 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 that's because it's a self-serving kind of thing to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's 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 something that para kang para kang mga criminal, you know, you you try to protect each other. Oh, dapat magkaparepareh yung mga kwento natin because if you trace all the kind of the bombshell allegations of this investigation from the get-go, practically all of them involve police officers. You know, yeah. and it's, 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 you know, it taxes the, 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 the imagination or it taxes credulity to not uh, conclude that the police, the PNP as an organization, has allowed this thing to happen and they need uh, also to be held accountable. Yeah. Kaloy, super quick, I just wanted to ask, Reg, because uh, I saw on your website from Human Rights Watch that drug-related PNP killings are still happening under this administration. Can you tell us very quickly uh, what is happening in terms of PNP-related well, drug killings? Well, there's a thing. The drug war is still happening, although the level of violence is not as intense as before. People are still being killed. 
people are still being, uh, uh, people are still dying. Uh, because one of the reasons is because the drug war policy of Mr. Duterte is still in force. That's a, th that's a thing we want the Marcos administration to change, to rescind mm. all of these police orders that operationalize the drug war. Until he, did, he does that, all of this talk about him not being Duterte and him uh, you know, uh, promoting human rights, that's going to be meaningless. Right. Uh, what is your tally for EJKs under the Duterte administration, total victims? Well, there's a there's kind of a debate as to how, ma how is, many. There exactly, is a wide but disparity, but what is Human Rights Watch's figure? We don't we don't do that. We don't do qu uh, qu uh, quantitative thing. We just okay. do qualitative. But if we go by what the police officially admits, like the six thousand two hundred fifty two mm. deaths, mm. Na mga since twenty sixteen up to uh, twenty twenty two. That's a lot of people who died yeah. uh, na lahat. And in fact, mayroon kong sinabi si Father Flavio during the hearing. Yeah. If all those people actually nanlaban, it goes without, it, logically, dapat mayroon mga baril yung mga yan. Nasaan yes. mga baril na yun? And it hasn't been accounted for. That is a very good question. But we've run out of time, so we're going to have to leave that there. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and helping us make sense of this. Carlos Conde, Human Rights Watch.